everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It's time for a sublimation lesson. Have you ever wanted to personalize items that you can find at stores like the Dollar Tree? Let me show you how easy it is to adjust sublimation designs for any item. And then I'll show you how to print and apply the design to canvas, glass, and fabric. With these skills, you'll be able to customize almost anything. And if you wanna see them on more of these things, like how I did this, check out my Dollar Tree sublimation video over at jennifermaker.com slash Dollar Tree sublimation ideas. Ready? Let's get started. Step one, get a sublimation design. If you need some sublimation designs, you can use any of my free Dollar Tree sublimation idea design files. To find them, go to jennifermaker.com slash 399 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. And then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the design by searching the page for design number 399 and then click it to download a zip file with high quality sublimation design files. The nine images that I've included in this file have bright, positive designs and sayings. I use lots of fun colors and blends to show the beautiful effects that you can create with sublimation. You can also make your own sublimation print design. I provided the blank background designs free for you to get started. Also, I'll show you how to sublimate a photo for a beautiful, personalized present. Today, I'm going to make the twinkle design on a fleece blanket and the love design on a canvas. Then I'll show you how to sublimate a photo onto a glass cutting board. They're all going to look so beautiful. I'll measure the blanks now so I can print them at the right sizes. One of the really neat things about sublimation is that you can let the design cover the entire object you're decorating. It can even go off the edges if you want, which I love to do. I'll show you how to protect your equipment from any ink that might spill over the edges too, so don't worry. The fleece blanket is 27 by 31 inches, and our design is 10 by 6 inches, so that will fit nicely in a corner of the blanket. The canvas is 8 by 10 inches, and I want to cover the whole thing, so I'll print the design that big, or just even a little bit bigger. And the glass cutting board is just under 8 inches square, so I'll print the part of my photo that I want to use at that size. These items are all pretty easy to measure since they're rectangles, or very large. If you're supplementing on an irregular item, like a shaped plaque, you'll need to make the design large enough to completely cover it. Measure the item as if it is a rectangle, so you can see the widest and tallest area you want to cover. Once you have the measurements, you can find all of the super easy steps to adjust and print your designs using Google Docs on my blog at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation prints. Or if you want to print using Cricut Design Space, visit the post for this project at jennifermaker.com slash Dollar Tree Sublimation Ideas. Remember, if you're adding a photo to a glass cutting board like me, put it on the back so it doesn't come into contact with food and it'll last much longer. That means we don't need to mirror the photo during printing. I'm using a sub paper in my Epson EcoTank with Hippo Sublimation Ink. Of course, you can use another sublimation printer with different sublimation ink too. Just make sure you use compatible supplies. You can find all of my best tips on sublimation printers, ink, and materials in my ultimate guide to getting started with sublimation at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation for beginners. Step two, prepare your blanks. Once you've printed your sublimation designs, you'll have to prepare the items. Some are certainly easier than others. For example, the fleece blanket is super easy. We just preheat it to remove any moisture, so set your press to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and set the timer for 5 seconds. I'm going to use my auto press, but you can also use a Cricut Easy Press or another clamshell or swing away heat press that gets hot enough. While it heats up, use a lint roller to remove any extra fluff in the area that you want to press. Pick off any stubborn pieces if you need to. Since we're essentially dyeing the fibers with our ink, you want a clean, uniform surface for the best results. 
Then run your hand over the area to make the fibers go in the same direction. This is more important on fabric with fur or individual fibers that have any sort of dimension to them. But even fleece can have some pieces sticking up in the wrong direction. When the heat press gets to the right temperature, press the design area for five seconds to preheat it and remove moisture. And that's all. Just set it aside while we prepare the other items. Now, while we're thinking of the blanket, take some time to trim the excess white paper away from the design. Then gently rip the edges so you don't have a sharp indent in your fabric. Trust me, this will make a huge difference in your end sublimation product. Solid surfaces are easy to sublimate if they're made out of a material that can receive sublimation ink. Unfortunately, things like canvas and glass are not on that list. But I found a magic material for making solid surfaces very easy to sublimate on. What is it? Laminating pouches. These are usually used to seal in paper or stickers, but it turns out that the clear plastic of the lamination plays really well with sublimation. I found laminating pouches that are just about nine by 11 and a half inches, and you can cut them in half so you can cover two letter sized items with one pouch. Just cut the sheet to a bit larger than the size of your item. If you're sublimating on an irregular shape, cut the laminating sheet large enough to cover it and we'll trim it afterward. For the canvas and the cutting board, I'll cut one pouch in half. Then I'll leave one half as it is to cover the whole canvas. I'll trim the second half to about eight and a half inches square to cover the cutting board. I'm gonna use the auto press to adhere my laminate to the solid surfaces first. Temperature, time, and pressure amounts vary a lot between materials and presses, so be sure to check your manufacturer's settings. You can use my settings as a general guide or place to start. And since we're heating up plastic and later working with sublimation ink, open a window and set up a fan to improve your ventilation. You don't want to breathe in the fumes from either process. Remember, safety first. I'll add the laminate to the canvas first since it uses a lower temperature. So heat your press to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and set the timer for 30 seconds. Now we need to protect the press from the laminating sheet. To do this, place white cardstock on the pressing area and then add the canvas face up. Add a second piece of cardstock if the canvas is too close to any edges. Put the laminate on top of the canvas with the shiny side up. Cover the materials with white uncoated butcher paper to protect your heat press. Once the press comes to the correct temperature, press it until the timer goes off. Let the canvas and laminate cool for a few seconds. Then remove the butcher paper and check out the new surface. The melted laminate might stick to the cardstock, see why we covered the surface, but it will stay adhered to the canvas. Just trim off any excess with a craft knife. Laminating the glass cutting board is pretty similar. Adjust the heat to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and set the timer for 60 seconds. We're going to add the image to the back of the glass so the plastic and dye won't come into contact with food. While the press heats up, pull the little rubber feet off of the cutting board and set them aside. Then clean both sides with rubbing alcohol and a lint-free cloth. Place new white cardstock on the pressing area and add the cutting board face down. Add the laminate, keeping the shiny side up and then put new butcher paper over the top. Once the heat press comes to the correct temperature, press the cutting board and laminate until the timer goes off. Let the cutting board and laminate cool for a few seconds, then remove the butcher paper and check it out. Again, peel it off of the cardstock and trim off any excess laminate with a craft knife. Now you'll notice that there are a few wrinkles in the laminate, and no matter what time or temperature we tried, we got those wrinkles. Glass is the hardest to put laminate on, and the larger the surface, the more wrinkles you're likely to get. 
but the wrinkles don't really bother me, and it's a small price to pay for the magic of the lamination, allowing me to sublimate. You'll want to experiment with your materials and laminate to decide what works best for you and what you're happy with too. Step three, sublimate your items. Now the real fun, adding the sublimation designs. Again, these are the settings that work best for me after a lot of research and experimentation, but always check your items for guidance. Let's start with the blanket. Preheat the auto press to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and set the timer for 60 seconds. Just like working with a laminate, lay down fresh white cardstock to protect your press, then lay the corner of the blanket in the press and place the design face down where you want it to appear. Use heat resistant tape to keep it in place. Make sure the whole design will be under the heat source and then cover the whole thing with white butcher paper and close the press once it heats up. After the time is up, carefully remove the butcher paper, but let the design and the blanket cool for several seconds while the ink changes from its gaseous state back into a solid. Then peel off the tape and the paper to reveal your awesome design. Now it might look a little squished right now, but the fibers will puff right back up after a gentle wash. For the canvas, preheat your heat press to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and set the timer for 60 seconds again. Replace the white cardstock and place the canvas face up on the pressing area. Gently center the design face down on top of your canvas and secure it with heat resistant tape. You might be able to reuse the pieces of tape from the blanket project if they aren't too fuzzy. Um, if not, use fresh tape, right? You really want to make sure that your tape is holding your project down really well. And then add butcher paper and press. Follow the same steps to carefully remove the cooled layers. It will kind of look like a painting. Isn't this cool? And now let's do the glass cutting board. Preheat your heat press to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and set your timer for 60 seconds. Replace the white cardstock with a new piece and place the cutting board face down on the pressing area. Gently center the image face down on top and secure it with heat resistant tape. Remember, we're putting our design on the back of the cutting board, right? So don't get confused by that and then add a clean piece of butcher paper and press. And then once you've removed the cooled layers, you can stick the little rubber feet back in place. Instant heirloom. Isn't sublimation so much fun? You can visit my blog to get the details on preparing and sublimating lots of other items just like these. Just go over to jennifermaker.com slash dollar tree sublimation ideas. And make sure to watch the video for all of the fun projects that I made with this design collection and Dollar Tree items. Now, if you need any help getting set up for sublimation, be sure to check out my sublimation startup mini course over at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation startup. I walk you through choosing and setting up your printer with the right ink, show you in more detail all of the tools that you can use and the wide variety of things that you can sublimate onto, like Dollar Tree stuff. And then I'll show you how to use software to print and press beautiful sublimation projects. You can sign up right now and learn at your own pace. I also have a group just for sublimation crafting where you can get help and tips from other crafters who love to sublimate. Come join us at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group to ask questions, share ideas, and get inspired. Now, I know I haven't covered everything there is to know about sublimating Dollar Tree things here, but I'm always happy to help. Watch for more sublimation tutorials and just leave any questions you have right below this video so I can point you in the right direction. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Music.